No matter what you do in the bathroom to get ready, Dollar Shave Club has everything you need to look, feel, and smell your best. They have amazing shower stuff, hairstyling products, toothbrushes and toothpaste, and of course, razors and shave supplies. Trey and I get ready for our show with hydrating hair and scalp shampoo and conditioner, Dream Hair Cream and Pacific Pomade. But you're not us. You have your own way to get ready. You might shave your whole body to get ready for a bike race. Dollar Shave Club's Executive Razor and Shave Butter can help you with that. You might do your hair to get ready for your soccer match. Boogies by DSC can help you get your style right. The thing is, no matter what you do to get ready, DSC has everything you need. And right now, you can get ready with an amazing deal on any one of their starter sets. I recommend the Daily Essential Starter Set, but you can't go wrong with any of them. Head over to dollarshaveclub.com slash golic to pick your own DSC starter set for just $5. After your starter set, products ship at regular price. And make sure you check out their new video as well. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash golic. dollarshaveclub.com slash golic. Remember when you couldn't order a ride at the press of a button? Or get online without hearing this... Or get Domino's delivered to over 150,000 unexpected outdoor locations. Wait, what? Introducing Domino's Hotspots. You can finally get pizza delivered right to the beach, the quad, or the dog park. Not at home? Not a problem. Find a Domino's Hotspot near you and get two medium, two-topping pizzas delivered for $5.99 each. Two at a minimum, handmade pan pizzas will be extra asked for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Restrictions apply. Visit Domino's.com for details on Domino's Hotspots. This is the best of Golick and Wingo podcast. Wow, we have we have done way too much for him. Just tell you that right now. We have when we're going to live to regret it again. It's Brett's last day. Our researcher. This is the last Brettomology. He's leaving us. Shed some out, pour some tears. I'm sad. Running away from us, kicking and screaming. Yes, Uh, pretended he was uh, late to work today because he had a. Issue dropping his bed out of a second. Yeah, a going away party last night. He was hammered. Yeah, too. Yeah. I mean, we look. You can't come into work and say it was a bed related issue when you put out an email saying, "Hey, everybody, join me for beers." And here. you know what? I'm okay with it. Yeah. Right. I'm just, okay with that. I mean, you just it's we got the receipts, man. Yeah, okay, yeah, we, we got do. the receipts, mm-hmm. so we know. Don't pretend like it's anything else right. than that. So last bread etymology coming up 7:45 Eastern. Exactly. Yeah. Golik and Wingo, ESPN Radio, ESPN Two, presented by Progressive Insurance. Uh, all phone guests join us on the Shell Penzoil Performance Line. Michael, it's time for Straight Talk. Brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. Okay. So, all off season, <laughs> speaking mm-hmm. of contracts, uh, the NFL has been dominated by whether or not three players would get new deals. Odell Beckham Jr., Aaron Donald, and then Khalil Mack. Odell Beckham Jr., check. Right. Literally. Big check. Oh, yeah. He got his money. However, we are still waiting on Aaron Donald and Khalil Mack. And while we all believe the Aaron Donald deal is going to get done, yes. none of us have any idea if or when this deal between the Raiders and Khalil Mack is going to get done. Uh, Charles Robinson of Yahoo Sports was on with Freddie and Fitzsimmons and basically laid it out very simply. If you're wondering why this deal isn't done, it's because of one guy and one guy only. It does rest in, in John Gruden's hands. There's been a lot of talk about well, GM Reggie McKenzie and, you know, uh, what is he doing? And Mark Davis, can Mark Davis fund this deal because he's considered to be one of the most cash poor owners in, in the NFL? This is on Gruden. I've been told this from multiple sources. It's in John's hands. He can green light this. And if and when he does that, it will get done. And if he doesn't, it's going to go into the regular season and they're going to force Coil Mack to, to miss games. And either he's going to report and be unhappy with his deal, or he's going to sit out as long as he feels he needs to. Because, because again, remember, Khalil Mack does have a contract. Yes. He has one more year on his deal. Brett, I forgot for how much it, it is. $13.8 million. $13.8 million. We don't need Brett anymore. He's, he's <laughs> yesterday's So year. he is under contract. He's getting fined for missing these preseason yes. games and such. So he, there is a contract there. It's not like he has no contract and, and is just sitting. Uh, and, and this, again, goes back. Remember John Gruden in talking about Khalil Mack early on in this process Basically saying our defense wasn't very good last year, yeah. and he was part of that. Yeah, in fact, Charles Robinson went on to explain that even more, basically trying to give you a thought process as to what John Gruden is thinking about and why he may or may not want to pay him all that money. Frankly, I think John slipped a little, and when he said, look, I've looked at the defense last year, we weren't very good, and Khalil Mack was on that defense. I think there's a little bit of, hey, we had this, game-changing player this elite edge rusher last year 
it did not make us an elite defense. And now you're saying, go ahead and pay him 22 to $23 million a year and all this guaranteed money for what? Why do we have to give him all that money now? Why can't he just play through his fifth year like Von Miller did? And if you're the team, you understand that. Well, um, however, my my point would be, uh, the counter to that, Mike, would be, wait a minute now. Um, if you really want him long term, you can go ahead and get him paid right now. Mm-hmm. And you can do that. And if you if you aren't going to pay him, do you run the risk of basically him saying, hey, man, I'm done with you. And, and you can say whatever you want about the defense. <laughs> and yes, they were they were 30th last year and he was on the team. But it's not like it was his fault. They oh, were thirty. Listen, that, he is a yeah. I, I'm with you. Let's be clear about that. He's not a he's not a liability. Yeah, yeah. he's the exact opposite of a liability. But there are a couple of interesting yeah. things here, Mike. First of all, I remember talking to John about Khalil Mack when he was coming out of the draft, and he had major reservations about Khalil Mack coming out of Buffalo. Who did he play? Can he really be that good? Well, yeah, that doesn't matter anymore. I mean, he probably he's, he's he's proved, proved it. it. Yeah, he's he proved, proved it. that he's an elite level athlete in the NFL. Here's the other. See if you can follow the dot, dots I'm going to connect here. Yes. So you heard right at the end of that, uh, Charles say play through his fifth year and then go from there. Well, if he played through his fifth year, again, Correct. he's he's under contract for about 13 mil. Then if they went through this next year, what could they do to him? They could tag him They once. could tag him. Tag him, I think, this year was about 17 mil for DN right. or whatever it was. So they could tag him. And then maybe they could tag him again. So basically what you're saying is three one-year deals. Possibly. All, all under big, big contract. Now where, I'm trying to think, hmm. where that may have happened in the near, in, in, in the in the past. Recent past. Recent past. Oh, Thank I you. know. It was in Washington yes. with that quarterback, Kirk, Kirk Cousins. Cousins. And who's the coach in Washington? Well, that would be Jay Gruden. Brother of? John Gruden. So I wonder if there was any kind of a conversation that said Jay was like, hey, yeah. look what we did with Cousins. And then you decide whether you want to pay him. You get three yeah. more years out of him. Now, that's if if he decides to step foot on the field. Correct. Uh, the, the, the Le'Veon Bell going through this. Kirk Cousins stepped on field both years of being tagged and made himself $44 million. Le'Veon Bell is about to do it again to make himself over the last two years about $26, 27000000 right. million. So that could be the thought process there. Khalil, you want to sit out and not make your thirteen mil this year? Fine, but we think you're going to play, and then we can tag you at least for another year or two and see what we got out of you before we do anything else. I just wonder... If that's part of the thought process as well, thinking that player is not going to turn down that money once we tag him. All right, so here's my question for you then. If you're Khalil Mack, what do you do? Listen, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, Brett is leaving the show. Oh, that's that's, a separate thing. At the end of the day, yes. It's 13 to 14 million dollars this year. And next year, I'm sure the tag will be higher. I don't know if there's a projection, Brett, of what the, what the tag will be. Oh, he's drunk. It's going to be at least 17 mil or more, right? So seven, uh, so do you turn that down? I mean, at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, man, I, I think it would take some big ones to sit there and say, I'm not going in. And you know what? Teams know that. Yep. Teams know that, and they bet on the fact of the guy may not be happy, but you know what? We can get him here for another year because he's going to get paid at least seventeen million dollars if we tag him. Is you? We really think that he'll sit out the entire season, and if he does, hey, again, that's the leverage these players have right. withhold their services. So it, it becomes a staring contest a little bit, and a lot of times the players are going to say, you know what? I'll stare as long as I'm not losing monster money. But if I start to th- the possibility of losing monster money, I'm going to blink. That's what we've seen in the past. I'm trying to think of the last big name player that actually didn't blink and missed all those games. I think it was Joey Galloway, a wide receiver when he was with Seattle. I think he missed what ten games that year, six games. He came in just so at the last moment so he could get the accrued year, and eventually he was moved on to Dallas, I, I think, the I, next I think year. the last guy that maybe sat out the entire season, Brett, you can correct me again if I'm wrong, was might have been Todd Bell for yeah. the 85 Bears. The year they won the Super Bowl, Oops, I believe he sat that entire season. Yeah. I think. If, obviously, I'll be corrected if I'm wrong, but I think he did. So, But now, look at the money that we're talking about. I mean, so I think that's what players can or, or teams can bank on to say, they may not be happy, but at the end of the day, the guy will play for eighteen, nineteen, twenty million dollars if we tag him. So I wonder if that's a thought process at all. The other side of that is Khalil Mack in a show. We saw Aaron Donald last year 
did, did, you know, didn't show the entire preseason when he had the tag on, on, uh, on, no, didn't have the tag on him, but, but when they wouldn't redo his deal and he came in the last week. Yep. He came in the last week, didn't play in the first regular season game and then played and, oh, by the way, had a monster year. So maybe that's the same thing, the same expectation. Uh, that they can do with Khalil Mack if they don't get the deal done. They haven't talked since February. That, that's the since thing that's February. most... If, if I'm a If I'm a Raiders fan, that's the most troubling thing. Why have you guys not even had a conversation since there was snow on the ground in other parts of the contiguous... There you go. States? And quickly, the other side of that is, this Aaron Donald deal we all feel is going to get done. Let's yeah. see if that spurs action yes. as well. When you have concrete numbers to Aaron Donald, does that reignite talks possibly if... The Raiders do, in fact, want to get it done with Khalil Mack. Again, the difference here is at least there's been conversations I agree. Oh, I with agree. Aaron Donald I agree. this entire yeah. way. The fact, yeah. the fact that there's been nothing, and we've heard some trade rumors as well. Look, I get it, and I understand on some level where John is coming from, but at the end of the day, you know what you really need to, to win football games? Really good players. And you know what Khalil Mack is? A really good player. Yep. Again, 2016 season, he was named All-Pro at two different positions. Again, not Pro Bowl, but they named the top 22 players in the NFL. Khalil Mack was on that team at two different positions. And let me just quickly do this, just to get it out of the way. One of the first t- tweets we got from Jared, Mack signed the deal, tag coming or not, honor it. This was collectively bargained. Hey, Jared... You know what? Who else doesn't honor contracts? The teams. Exactly. When they sign you to a three or four year deal and cut you in two, yeah. they're not honoring the deal. Doesn't work that way anymore, son. I'm sorry. That's it a just tired, doesn't. old, it irrelevant is. argument yes, because they can they can make that contract go away at any time yes, they, they want. Can. So what you do is you get for leverage any way you can. And by the way, that was straight talk on nationwide coverage of America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks on Straight Talk Wireless. Real quickly, the Joey Galloway thing. He missed eight games eight in ninety nine. Okay. I think that was the last. Per- Attracted holdout of a really superstar player in the NFL. Golick. Golick and Wingo. And Wingo. Mm-hmm. Trey Wingo and Mike Golick Sr. Hi, right, Golick and Wingo here with you, ESPN Radio, ESPN2. So, we're in an interesting situation because we've got some, uh, we got some head coaches that are just trying to control the message as they always try to do. You know, right? closer and closer to the start of the, right. of the, uh, of the regular season. A little more antsy everybody starts to get, especially those coaches who are now saying, boy, I hope we're ready. I hope we're ready. We better be prepared. Yeah, better be prepared. So um, everyone's trying to get that one answer out of Doug Peterson about the starting quarterback situation. We'll get to that in a minute. And then someone had the audacity to ask Bill Belichick, uh, hey, Bill, as you're getting your team ready, are you monitoring what the other 31 teams are doing in terms of where the players are and maybe players that might be released that you're looking at or grading. And let's just say Bill said, yeah, you think? You have an idea who those players are right now, Ethan? Absolutely. Yeah. We think we're going to do it. <laughs> well, I'm not saying, I'm not on other teams, I understand. I understand that you got players on your team. Yeah, that's a sure. Well, yeah. Players on other teams also that other players, you know, for specific to... Yeah, well, look at all 31 teams. Yeah, what do you think we're doing? We're in camp. We don't have watermelon rolls and <laughs> badminton contests and all that. Yeah, we're working on football. We look at our team, we look at the 31 teams. Yeah. Can I just it, say, when I awesome. when I first heard that, I thought he meant like a dessert, a watermelon. I, 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 watermelon. Well, you know, watermelon the game toss, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know what he meant, stuff. yeah. I've never heard of a watermelon roll. I didn't either. I, I thought, thought it was a new Little Debbie thing. I thought he'd first. pick a different yeah. picnic game, but that's yeah. what he meant. And listen, he's right. And we, we talked about this even yesterday. I mean, we're coming to the last preseason game. There's maybe a couple of spots on a team, right? Depending on injury, is a guy coming back? When's he coming back? Or you just actually have a couple of spots you're waiting to see. Other than that, these coaches know. And, and I had uh, up close and personal when Mike was uh, um, with the Saints at camp, and they had it at the Greenbrier, beautiful yep. resort. Yep. They uh, the Patriots came and practiced. Uh, for a few days there. So got to spend some time with some of them as well and see how they handle their business and heard Bill talking about it. They have people, you know, you have your scouts and some coaches, you're looking at tape of the practices, but you're looking at the other guys. Yep. You're looking at the other team. They're always breaking down the other, as Bill said, other 31 teams as well 
for guys that you can cherry pick if they're to get cut or not. This is a constant thing that's going on. There's not just watermelon rolls going no, on. No, again, watermelon <laughs> rolls. Listen, anything that gets Bill Belichick to make a joke, oh, I'm absolutely. All for it. Teddy Bruschi has told me a million times he is really funny. He just doesn't show yeah, that a lot. Yeah. And, and there you saw a little bit of that there. And again, we talked about this a little yesterday. The worst part is the cuts are coming Saturday. Yeah. 53 yeah. man roster. People yeah. think they've made the team and somebody else gets cut somewhere else and that your team. Well, that's exactly that right. Yeah. They, they know a guy may be on a team, but they also know if this guy becomes available, he takes that spot and bumps him. So it's a, it's a tough, it's tough for those back end guys coming up this Friday and Saturday. You're on some pins and needles. And, and of course, everybody in Philadelphia is on pins and needles wanting to know whether Carson Wentz will be able to play. Week one, again, a week from tomorrow, they start their season against the Atlanta Falcons. And Doug Peterson, again, uh, continuing to uh, try and say the same thing a million different ways about when he's going to know who his starter is. Deadline, 90 minutes before the kickoff, I think. So you don't need to know by Friday the game I'll know. Friday and Saturday? I'll know. That's what I'm saying. I mean, me personally, I will know. Yeah, yeah I'll know. Friday. Is Friday when you ever make the decision? Publicly? Oh, privately, probably Friday. I listen. In all honesty, I think they know right now. I mean, (laughs) uh, I, I don't. I Carson Wentz has to get cleared. Not even cleared. They're not cleared for so. So to think he's going to get cleared and then play the next week, I would doubt it. Now, is it possible? Well, absolutely, it's possible. He's been out there practicing. Uh, and, and moving around, and people all say he looks good out there, but there's a difference in practice when nobody can touch you, and in the game when you're running for your life, when people can touch you very hard. Yeah. Well, well, maybe not so much without getting a flag. Well, they'll still do it. Yeah, but it'll the, be a severe pat down. They, they'll, they'll try. Yeah. Uh, to to me, I I don't see any way Carson went to starting in game one. Look, if if you if by Friday you don't know that he's cleared, you can't start it. Yeah. Because you have to start game prep. You have to put in a game plan. You have to do all this kind of stuff. Oh, and that started already, yeah. too, by the yeah. way. For those that yeah. think they haven't started looking ahead to week one, yeah. they have. <laughs> yeah. And I give Doug a lot of credit this time. You know, how many times do you want me to say it? I'll know. You may not know. Yeah. But I for sure will know. And we'll find out sooner rather than later with Carson Wentz for game one. <laughs> Uh, I tell you what, a great sports night last night, yeah. no doubt about it. And Wingo. What a day, what a show, what a time. One, two, three, four. Support for the Golick and Wingo Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Let's talk about buying homes for a minute. Because of rising interest rates, there's a lot of unpredictability when it comes to buying a home these days. It's causing a whole lot of anxiety with folks. Well, our friends at Quicken Loans are doing something about it. They're calling it the power buying process, and here's how it works. Quicken Loans will verify your income, assets, and credit in less than 24 hours to give you a verified approval. This gives you the strength of a cash buy. Then once you're verified, you qualify for their all new exclusive rate shield approval. First, they lock your rate for up to 90 days while you shop. Now here's the best part. If rates go up, your rate stays the same. But if rates go down, your rate also drops. You win either way. It's the kind of thinking you'd expect from America's largest mortgage lender. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Golic. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply. Based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data record, equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Remember when you couldn't order a ride at the press of a button? Or get online without hearing this? Or get Domino's delivered to over 150,000 unexpected outdoor locations? Wait, what? Introducing Domino's Hotspots. You can finally get pizza delivered right to the beach, the quad, or the dog park. Not at home? Not a problem. Find a Domino's Hotspot near you and get two medium, two-topping pizzas delivered for $5.99 each. Two at a minimum handmade pan pizzas will be extra asked for this limited time offer. Prices for participation delivery area and charges may vary. Restrictions apply. Visit Domino's.com for details on Domino's Hotspots. There are boxes of full donuts at your disposal outside. There was a waste of half a donut, and I know Lewis Riddick is on my side on this one. I oh. know he is. Lou, oh. you want to weigh in on that? Trey. Yeah. Yes. Okay. What are you doing? Oh, see, he's do- no. Bro, okay, look, 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 look. I'm not bandwagoning here. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a donut. Freak. Dude. All right, you're a donut freak. When well, I saw them sitting out there, yeah, those yeah. guys looked at me. I was sitting there like this. My eyes were like, oh, uh-huh. my God. All right. This is the greatest and thing. And if I've he ate half a donut and offered you the other half, would you eat it? Uh, no. There you, you go. Wouldn't? Thank you. It's a 50-50 <laughs> split. 
It's no, a 50 you know, I love Trey, split. man, but I'm, you know, I'm not trying to. All right. <laughs> yeah, I got it. We got it. it. Look, we're good. I felt like a we're friend was getting thrown in the trash can. <laughs> and so, and so <laughs> what did you do to that I, friend? You I, ingested it. I, I saved the friend. <laughs> this is my friend that I'm going to leave to a horrible ending in my stomach. I, I would have found some napkins. I would have yeah. brought my donut in here. Man. <laughs> there you go. I'm sitting out in the hallway. Oh, we, let's hope it's there in 15 <laughs> minutes. We, we tackle all good. the big topics yeah, here at Golden Wingo. But again, that rejoin was because today is the last day for researcher Brett. Right. Of Bretomology fame, which we will play in a few yes, minutes. Yes, we will. And, and so we had someone call in and say, hey, what's his name? I'm going to really miss. This person called in earlier and didn't remember Brett's, Brett's name. name. And you know what? Apparently they felt very badly about that, so they called in again. Good morning, Golick and Wingo, and of course, Brett. This is Carol from Virginia. Say it isn't so. I'm so sorry to hear that there won't be any more Brettomology. It's really brightened my Wednesday mornings, and it's just not going to be the same. A best of luck to Brett, and I'm still a fan of Golick and Wingo. Bye bye. I, I don't even say best Aww. of luck to Brett. Brett's ditching us. Yeah, I screw could him. care less where yeah. he's going or what he's <laughs> doing. He showed up drunk today. That's exactly right. Well, Carol, you should know he showed up drunk. Yep. And late. And yep. didn't bring donuts. Yep. So all of those Boom. things. I mean, no, whatever. Okay. Whatever. Get out of here. Mm-hmm. I, I, I thought it was the same person. It's a different person. But that was the sweetest voicemail we'll ever have. Nice. Do you know why? Why? Because the pettiest show we in America. Petty. We don't do sweet. No. Except for Carol. Mm-hmm. Carol, thanks for sticking with us. Brett, whatever. You know who uh, else doesn't do sweet, Trey? Yeah. Guy who throws half a donut in the trash. Boom. That's exactly right. Boom. That's I, I did not do well with that sweet. No, you you are 100% not. correct. Meanwhile, uh, we're delighted to have Lewis Reddick, our <laughs> NFL front office insider in studio, giving us the Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. Mm-hmm. And first of all, we had Patrick Mahomes on yesterday. Yeah. And, and we played your gushing love of Patrick Mahomes yeah, yeah, for, yeah. for Patrick Mahomes. He's like... He's a smart man. He knows what he's talking about. I Pat, can't. I can't let Lewis down. Pat and I. Pat and I have talked. We talked yeah. a little bit. He knows the expectation. He knows what is riding on the, on this right here. Well, yeah. we we know he's going to be the starting quarterback. Doug Peterson is basically going back and forth with the media, saying, "I'll know Friday." You guys, you know, hey, you may know ninety minutes before the game. Mm. In, in your opinion, do they know right now? And is there any way in your mind you think Carson Wentz would be starting game one? No, I, I still think it'll be caution. I think that'll rule today. I think it'll still be Nick Foles' show. You know, the, if if Nick, well, first of all, let, let's just rewind and understand that they're not playing with their full complement of people right. in the preseason, all right? I mean, right. they don't have Jason Peters. They don't have Darren Sproles. They don't have Alshon Jeffrey. Mm-hmm. They haven't played with Nelson Aguilar. That's a lot of weaponry right there. And Nick, we all know, despite this past offseason, everyone's saying, well, they should ask for a one and a two or maybe a two or three to get Nick out of there and, and you know capitalize on his increased value. They know what they've got in Nick. They know it's not going to always look pretty. They know that practices don't always look great for him. And a lot of his game film this year in the preseason hasn't mm-hmm. looked good. But they're going to play him, and they're going to be just fine. They'll they'll manufacture wins despite some of their key guys not having a lot of reps. They'll manufacture wins early in the season until they all get up to speed. But I don't think Carson I, – I just don't see him playing. I always got the feeling from there that they were going to really take this slow. And there are a lot of people who are weighing in on this. Right. And – a lot of people have to be in alignment before they put them out there. All right, Lewis, let's weigh in on another team in the NFC East, and that would be the Giants. Mike and I are of the opinion that the way this deal is structured with Odell Beckham Jr., it is a win-win for both the team and the player. Because mm-hmm. while it's five years, $95 million in theory, sure. it's essentially a three-year deal with guaranteed $60 million. 65 right. over the life, but three years, $60 million over the first three. So right. essentially, as we read it, that says to us the Giants, if – for whatever reason, they need to go through a rebuild. If, if Eli Manning is you know done after three years or even mm-hmm. before that, they can get out of the Odell Beckham Jr. contract after three years and part ways and not be cash-strapped. And it also means that at 28, Odell Beckham Jr. may get another kick at the can here. Well, sure. I mean, that, that's kind of like how, you, how you're always looking down the road. What would this mean once the hard guarantees are done? Would we be able to get out of this with any kind of salary cap ramification that would hamstring us? No. For Odell, can I get out of this and still be at an age where people aren't going to hold it against me, provided that I'm healthy? You know, check that box. So, yeah, it is a win-win for everyone in that way. I don't – you know what? I see where you're going as far as, like, if, if Eli Manning is now out the door and they're going through a rebuild. I don't think that the team – is necessarily going to be going through a rebuild. I think they're going to build it the right way in terms of having a lot of youth on this team. Now, they're going to need a quarterback. Whether or not Davis Webb is that guy, I think you know where I stand on that one. So we'll see what happens there. And Kyle Aletta, we don't know what he is yet. So I think they'll be looking. But, yeah, getting back to Odell Beckham, 
I mean, it, it's a win-win for those two parties involved, Odell and the Giants, and it's a win for the league because this is what you need to see. You need to see teams taking care of their homegrown guys. We talk about it all the time, Mike. And it, it's just better. It's better for teams. It's better for fan bases. It's better for team building overall because that makes guys feel – better about the organization that they're involved with and you take care of guys who put in the work like these two have. And being part of the organization for a while. We're going through that now with Aaron Donald, who was yeah. drafted by this team, Khalil Mack drafted by this team. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you from the front office standpoint, because we see holdouts, we see guys sign, and then we just see them go play. We don't see every day everybody's in the facility together all the time. Mm-hmm. While we, I always try and say, but I was guilty of this, and it's hard not to be, you, you can't take it personal, it's business. But when it, some of these situations going on, especially the Khalil Mack situation, mm. if they do get it squared away and he does sign a deal, are there hard feelings sure. between the player and, and yeah. management and or coaches in this yeah, case? Yeah, especially if management in particular tries to – look, there's nothing worse that will tick you off more as a, as a player than know what your value is, have – and before your contract comes up, people are telling you how important you are, how ingrained you are in the community. We can't win without you. You're part of the long-term plans. Until. And then when the negotiation starts, it's, you know what, you're getting a little older. Yeah, you gave up that touchdown pass. Yeah, hey, you know what, you did miss this treatment at this time. And yeah, you know, we're kind of like looking down the road. And when contract negotiators resort to that kind of BS to try and drive the price down and try and get value for them, players, look, I, I've seen that happen. I saw that happen firsthand in a couple of the places I was at. With players who were like kind of right on that cusp, right, right on the edge of maybe, maybe you were trying to move on. They probably had a year or two left, maybe three years left, and you don't use those kind of tactics against people who are beloved in particular, mm-hmm. and you're you know on your football team because the players don't forget it. They absolutely don't forget it, and more importantly, Mike, you know that other players in the locker room are going, man, they are doing our boy wrong here, I, and you don't do that. You right. don't use that against people. You can you can be on. You know we we're okay with you being honest mm-hmm. and saying, hey, look. You're not the same player you may as you not were. like to hear it, but right. at least you want to hear the right. truth. Right, but don't all of a sudden, don't start slapping me in the face with stuff that, you know, two months ago you were sitting here, you know, and you were telling me how great I was. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. Right, don't so, do that. So explain to us real quickly why there haven't been, in your mind, if you can, as we're talking with Lewis Riddick here, our front office insider in the NFL, why there haven't been any communications. Forget there's not a deal done. Why there is no formal talks being done between Khalil Mack and the Raiders since February. Yeah, that's... I don't know. I, I, I really can't explain that. I, I'd have a hard time believing that there, that has been just absolute radio silence. Cause if it is, then they are not even, I mean, they're not even remotely close to striking a deal as far as trying to determine what the guaranteed money would be and what the average per year would be. And if that's the case, then look, I love John. I have a ton of respect for John. I have a ton of respect for Reggie McKenzie, Joey Kling skills, all those guys out there in Oakland. But come on now. Yeah. Come on. You don't do this to a guy who has been this durable and this productive and a guy who has been an upstanding citizen for your football team. You don't do him like that if that's the case and it has been radio silence like that, which I just find hard, hard to believe. Look, I like I said, I ran in there in Donald on Friday in Pittsburgh, and he could not have been, like, whereas he was chomping at the bit to get out there mm-hmm. to L.A., he was like, yeah, man, you know, I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic, which tells me, like, you know they're talking. Done, and Sean yeah. McVay has said they're yeah. talking, and... And we know these numbers are going to be big. I mean, that that's the kind of that's the kind of relationship you want to be having. You don't want to be talking about well, you know, you haven't even heard anything out of Khalil Mack. I mean, people don't even say where he is. What's what is he doing? You don't see any video of him, of him anywhere. And every time the Raiders are talking about him, it's just like Ugh, we got to talk about this. And that's the it's just not not the chord you really want to strike with that kind of player. I don't I don't get that. I don't get that. I don't the, get it either. On the other side of it is the players who are going to lose their jobs Friday and Saturday. Mm-hmm. I've been in this position. My son Mike's been in this position. Well, You've been, been in this position. position. Yeah. So how are these couple of days, if you can go back remembering how it is for, for all those players, that are the thousand players that are going to be in that position that these next uh, few days? It is. It's one of those things where... You, you deal with two two things when you're if you wind up getting cut, yeah. right? You deal just, with just having to look cut. your teammates who are going to still be there in the face when they're sitting there, and, and you and you know that they're going to go to the next meeting, and you're packing your stuff up, and you're getting a plane ticket, and that hurts. It just flat out hurts. And then it's the call to your family, oh. whether it be your mom, your dad, your sisters, whoever it is, because you literally feel like you failed. Even though you know that this is kind of the you know the meat grinder that the mm-hmm. NFL can be, I remember getting cut from San Francisco when I 
the, which was my original draft team in 1991, I, I had to call a cousin first because I couldn't deal with talking to my mom and dad. It literally felt, I mean, it, it was like, I mean, it, I felt so like just defeated. And it, and it, and it is because you, I mean, you work your entire life. Odell Beckham Jr. was talking about this yesterday about all the sacrifices you put in. Mm-hmm. You know, whether you're a superstar or you're a guy who's just trying to hang on, you've sacrificed a lot to try and get to this point. Your parents have sacrificed a lot. They've driven you everywhere. They bought you shoes. They let you, you know, join gyms and health clubs to, to try and get to a, to a point where you're at the pinnacle and then you get whacked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's hard. I mean, that, that was very, very, very emotional for me. Yeah. And something I'll never forget, which on the flip side, you could just see Odell yesterday was like, he's sitting there like rewinding in his mind all the things that you just have never seen that he's probably had to go through to make himself in the player he is. It was like, finally. Golick and Wingo. It was all sort of one big giant yeah. jello mold. It's very interesting where that went. Bye-bye, Brett. We'll miss the moments like this. Maybe that'll be in Brettomology at one point. We're not um, taking requests, you guys. You have the most beautiful words. But really, the beauty of Brett is right here. Brett just went on camera and pointed to his face. Sorry for the times we yelled at you. Shut up, Brett! You could leave. Or. 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 Or you could stay and play bread emology one last time. We're gonna take it to the high seas. That's my special guy. Oh yeah, wow. little Hamilton. Wow. One last time. Sports Center brought to you by DraftKings. DraftKings hosting fantasy football contest for week one with $2 million up for grabs. Get the app or go to DraftKings.com. Now use the code GOLIC. Play free with your first deposit. Minimum $5 deposit is required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. The best part, I think, about our songs like that yes. is the singing is horrible. It's horrendous. It's so bad, it's good. Yes. That's 100%. Because I think a lot of people say, boy, why don't they get somebody who can sing? That'll no. ruin it. No, we don't want that. No. By the way, Brett, highest of honors, we found a Hamilton song yeah. for you to say goodbye. One last time, Hamilton talking uh, with George Washington about saying goodbye one last time. Whatever. Okay. Oh, thanks for breaking down it's, Hamilton it's for us. For, Appreciate that. Listen. I don't, Seriously? Hey, hey, Brett's not throwing away a shot. Okay. Brettomology brought to you by Discover Card. Discover thinks annual fees are ridiculous. If you do too, find out more at discover.com. We always do the official Bretomology standings. We're only doing two. All right. I'm at 72%, 46 for 64. You're at a putrid 53%, 34 for 64. You're great. I I give you all the credit. You're fantastic at this. This is the only thing I do well. All right, Brett, here we go. One last time. Let's crank it up. All right, guys. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Aha. Is it? Ah. From the Scottish author. James Mercer Borthwick, the pen name of Robert Douglas, the 17th Earl of Morton. Borthwick released a series of wildly popular short stories in the early 1800s in the Herald newspaper in Glasgow. The story in question here was called The Midwife's Mischief. The phrase was used to describe the midwife early in the story. Quote, she had such disdain for the maiden that she once dreamt of dumping the bath with the newborn babe still inside. Or, or, the phrase dates back to Germany in the 1500s, a proverb written by Tomasz Murner in his satirical <laughs> book, An Appeal to Fools. The phrase in German reads, Schüt it das Kind mit dem Bate aus, <laughs> which literally translates to, pour out the child with the bath. But a second or, or a new wrinkle today, are both of those fake? Oh, oh man. Ah. You know what? Ah. Uh, listen. Hey, ah. I wouldn't put it past you to say they're both fake, but you know I have a standing rule. Whenever I can say the word Bundesliga, I like to say it. So Bundesliga, I'm going with Germania. I'm saying they're both fake. We're going Germany. Germany, number two. Yeah! <laughs> Germania and Bundesliga. Your next phrase. I feel like a loser. <laughs> next phrase. Cat got your tongue. Ah. 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 Is it from the military? Ah. The chief form of corporal punishment in the British military in the 17 and 1800s was lashing with a cat of nine tails. Unsurprisingly, soldiers would be pretty quiet after receiving a whipping, so cat having the tongue became a way for soldiers to taunt each other for being afraid of punishment. Or, or, or did it originate in the Middle Ages during the time of the Black Plague? Cats were already associated with witchcraft, 
But more importantly, there were also carriers for the plague and played a large role in spreading the disease. English playwright Kit Marlowe coined the phrase in 1616 work Dr. Faustus. The titular character says, Dost thou disagree, or hath the cat stolen thine tongue? Or are both of those fake? I hate you for this. I, I love the fact that there's an added twist. I'm going number two. Well, I'm picking the second <laughs> well, answer. Can you leave the room then? Because I don't need to know that. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Brett, you like to throw those curveballs in there. I'm saying they're both fake. Both fake. What are you guys saying? We got no idea. Go ahead, Brett. They're both fake. Yeah! Yay! Yeah! What's the Who's actual the origin? Smart guy now? What's the actual the origin? The actual origin is that it's just a, a random children's taunt from the 1800s that wow. nobody really knows where it came All from. All right, right, let's get one more and we'll save the fourth one for over the top. Carpe diem. Seize the day. Wow. Is it from the Roman author Quintus Horatius Flaccus, known in English as Horace, the preeminent, preeminent poet in Rome just after the death of Julius Caesar? The phrase was first written in his book Odes, but the key difference is that the Latin word carpe actually means pluck. So instead of seize the day, it really means pluck the day, like a ripe piece of fruit off a tree. His quote read, carpe diem quam minimum credula posero, which <laughs> translates to seize the day, put no trust in the future. Or, or, or did the phrase come from Great Britain, of all places? The great poet, Lord Byron, was a historical scholar and took a great interest in the ancient Greek and Roman societies and learned Latin from a London bootmaker. In a letter to a friend in 1817, pu published posthumously in 1830, Byron wrote, quote, I never anticipate, carpe seconds. diem, the past at least is one's own, which is one reason for making sure of the present or both fake. Come on, I gotta be Roman. I'm yeah. going number one. Listen, anytime you can invoke Quintus, yeah, I mean that's like that's like a gladiator. I'm going Quintus. What are you guys doing? They're both fake. It's from uh, Dead Poet Society. Oh, Captain, my captain. Okay. Oh, he's standing on the chair. By the way, nicely done, Devin. Number one. Rome. Number one. Quintus. Woo! Quintus. Yes, three for three. Yes. All right, we're gonna finish up the final bretomology on the other side. Is the final bretomology? I'm not even sad. Golick and Wingo. Let's not expect too much. There's only one person out there that's expecting way too much out of this guy too early. We know who that is. It's his father. When it comes to hiring, you don't have time to waste. You need help getting to your short list of qualified candidates fast. That's why you need Indeed.com. Post a job in minutes, set up screener questions, then zero in on qualified candidates using an intuitive online dashboard. And when you need to hire fast, accelerate your results with sponsored jobs. New users can try for free at Indeed.com slash podcast. That's Indeed.com slash podcast. Terms, conditions, and quality standards apply. Hope your Wednesday's off to a good start. Glad you're with us. Golik and Wingo, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests will join us on the Shell Penzoil performance line. You can get in touch with us, 1-800-Flowers.com, Twitter feed, at Golik and Wingo, or, or, or call in 860-506-5505. And we've had a ton of voicemails calling in today because, as we've been alluding to throughout the show, today is the last day for researcher Brett right. to be on the show. And we've done an extended dance mix version of our weekly segment, Bretomology. We did the first three in the last mm -hmm. hour, and we're finishing up the final, final uh, fourth Bretomology wow. on the top of this hour. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And then he has some Bretomology facts and some notes bonus facts. after that. So we're giving him a little more airtime, something that he loves before he is out the door. Uh, choosing to leave us, so after uh, the show's over today, we don't really care where he goes. No, have no have no nope. interest in, in Brett whatsoever after None. this after this day. So, but we do have one more phrase, Brett. So yeah. we do have one up. more in the in the normal game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in a pickle. In a pickle. In a pickle. Ooh. In a pickle. Was it first coined by friend of the program Bill Shakespeare? Bill, Bill. Bill. In his who may not ever play, existed. Yeah. The Tempest. He used it to describe a conundrum faced by one of his characters, just as we would today. Alonzo says, And Trinculo is reeling ripe. Where should they find this grand liquor that hath gilded him? How camest thou in this pickle? And Trinculo responds, I have been in such a pickle since I saw you last. Or, or, or oh, you guys, this is the matchup you've been waiting for, for this whole time, for our other origin. We're taking it to the high seas. Yes! yes! Oh, high seas against Bill Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Admiral Horatio Nelson, a commander in the British Navy, 
was killed in action in the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805, but his journal revealed that he had directed his crew to preserve his body in a pickling mixture of brandy and camphor for the trip back to England. The passage read, quote, I will lead the men with honor until my body is in a pickle barrel. Later, in a pickle barrel, and eventually in a pickle, was a British Navy phrase for a particularly dangerous situation, or are both origins fake? Yeah, All right, Brett. so this is one where I'm just trying to outthink Brett, which yeah. is going to be a mistake. I'm Good luck part. with that. He knows uh, how we feel about, or I feel about Bill Shakespeare as, yeah. a, as a, a friend of mine. Yeah. And we know how the <laughs> high Bill, seas Billy. always come into play here. So I'm going to say they're both fake. You're going to say they're both fake. Both fake. I like what <clears throat> I like what you're doing. However, I think in the spirit of the show and how much controversy we've had about whether or not William Shakespeare actually existed or not, I think he's doubling down hard. It's all Bill all the time. Number one, you're saying number, that. Number one. What are you saying? I feel like we were going to do a goal like, dude, you can't make us pick between Bill Shakespeare and the high seas, but you picked neither. Trey, you picked Billy. We're gonna we're gonna go to the high seas. Go to the high seas. Why not? So we all on the last one of Brettomology, we all have a different answer. Brett, who's right? I think it's only fitting that Trey is right. Yay! Hey! 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 Yeah, buddy. It Who's really the is smart only fitting. Guy now? There you go. You're right because you I you were smoked. You 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 finish up what? So fifty for sixty eight. Fifty for sixty eight. And I finish up thirty five for sixty eight. Wow. Okay. You're really good at this. Thank you. You did a nice. I have job. no other appreciable skill. No, you don't. But I that's don't. okay. Yeah. You so. you did well. Seventy four percent. Seventy four percent. You almost got three quarters of them right. Yeah. That is really really pretty impressive. Well, you know, I do th- you know I do this thing that you should try doing. I read books. Yeah. So you might want to think about that every nah, once in a while. Too far gone. I Actually, saw... 51% not reading at all? Nah, probably a better not stat. So probably Brett, a better stat. That's the end of your Brettomology, but you have some more notes or facts for yes, us? Yes, we have, we have a couple extras. So there were a lot in my research of all of these phrases. Sometimes I would come across uh, one that doesn't have a clear origin, but does have a good kind of urban legend associated okay. with it. Okay. So I have a couple of those that I'm going to I'm gonna rattle off for all you. All right. The whole nine yards. Right. Yeah. Terrible movie with uh, Matthew Perry and Bruce Willis. Unsubstantiated origin is that gunners in World War II were given nine yards of ammunition, and if you used all of it, you'd be in a tough spot. Ah, okay, I like that. but that is unsubstantiated. Ah, unsubstantiated. Right. Out of left field, a favorite of Dan Stanzik. Yes, the legend says there was a mental hospital across the street from West Side Park where the Cubs used to play in Chicago. So during a game, they could hear all sorts of weird things being yelled to them from outside of left field. It's most likely just an illusion to the fact that a runner going home can't see the throw coming from from left field. I like the first one. Yeah. Can we just go with the first one there? I like that one better. We can't. A cup of Joe. Coffee. The the best story Ah. is that the Secretary of the Navy, Josephus Daniels, banned alcohol, so the strongest thing you could drink on a naval vessel was coffee, and they nicknamed it after him out of spite. Oh, I like that, Probably just an evolution of Java or Jamok. Right, right. And the upper crust. Some people believe. Let me say right. Some people believe. Yes. In medieval kitchens, the top part of the bread would be served to richer people, and poor people would get the burnt bottom. Oh, wow. Really? That's not cool. But, again, these are unsubstantiated. Okay, so, so let me ask ah. you this. In all the, just so people understand how this works, Brett came up with the actual origin and then a fake one. A fake one. How much yeah. time did you put into the actual, and how much time did you put in creating the fake ones? So... The actual usually didn't take that long. I just had to write what it was. But the fakes would take, I mean, it could take half an hour per per one, sometimes up to an hour. This is a lot of work. You got you to gotta dig into history. And I have uh, one additional thing. Uh, by the numbers on Bread of Mileage. Okay. Rip through it real quick. We did 80 total phrases. 80. I wrote 11,180 words. Six origins are from ancient Greece or ancient Rome. Right. Six are from poetry. Eight are from the military, nine are from religion, and there were seven mentions of friend of the program, Bill Shakespeare. Billy! Five of the seven I made up completely. Nicely done. Wow. Well, th- th- that, you just said there were seven references to Shakespeare. Five of those seven were made up, right? Yep. Which sums up Bill Shakespeare, because nobody knows if he actually no, existed. No, that's not true. Just and- stop it. Brett? Brad? Well, we're not going to get back in it. I don't Brett? want to look to the No, taste. no, no. Brad? We're not going down that road. And we have yeah. one no. final number, yes. and that's zero. Yeah. Request that I took. There you go. That is very yeah, true. Brett. That, that's his walk. Brett, let me way. tell you. Yeah. Congratulations, man. That was a, nice, a great segment you done. came up with. And in all, in all honesty, best of luck where you go from here. Thank we you. We don't care, yeah. but, but I hope it but goes best well of for luck. you.
But seriously, yeah. best of luck. Yeah. But yeah. we don't care. There you go. All thanks right. for the donut. So there you go. Yeah, and Good thanks move. for eating that half donut out of the garbage. Well, it's your fault uh, for throwing it away. That, you are 100% correct. Mm-hmm. So this hour of Golik and Wingo is brought to you by La Quinta Inns and Suites. Book at LQ.com and win at business. So we just had a lot of fun with Bretomology. Mm-hmm. Uh, we enjoyed that very much. We're about to have a lot of fun with college football. Yes, we are. Week zero is in the past, and week one, the official big first start of college football, is this weekend. And to break that down, we're delighted to be joined by our college football analyst, Kirk Herbstreet. Uh, he joins us on the Shell Pencil Performance Line. Uh, Kirk, obviously, let's start uh, with what's been going on at Ohio State over the past week. How do you think Ryan Day and the players, because that's the players we haven't really heard from until recently, how do you think the players have handled everything that's going on with their program? Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. Happy, happy football to you. Yeah. You got it, man. Yeah, I, I think uh, you know, you're right. There's been so much talk about Urban and, and the press conference and, and just uh, you know, all the all the stuff off the field, uh, it has been lost a little bit. Even Ryan Day has been talked about and how the coaches are going to handle it, but it has been lost on what what the Ohio State players uh, have been dealing with. And uh, Paris Campbell gave us a little hint uh, to that yesterday, talking about how the team is very angry. Um, and, and you guys know from following this, and, and Mike, you, you know from being a, a part of teams that when things like this potentially divide a locker room, um, it, it's either going to divide that locker room and and ruin you, or it's going to bring you together and create that kind of hey, everybody's against us. It's let's go show them it's us against the world mentality. And I'm I'm guessing it's going to be the latter, um, just because I think these 18 to 22 year old kids feel that they're, this is their view that their coach and their program is being attacked and. We're going to go hold the fort down until coach is back kind of thing. I haven't spoken to any of them, but just listening to some of their comments, that's my take. So I'd be very, very surprised if they're, if it's not a, a very emotional, very fired up team that takes the field uh, Saturday in Columbus for Ohio State. We always talk about the beginning of a college season, Herbie, different from the NFL, right. that the NFL has the four preseason games, the college yeah. has none. So we see a lot of mismatches in week one, but we also have four ranked, ranked uh, and we know how precious each win and each loss can hurt you in college. So you guys, obviously, college game day will be at Notre Dame this week for Notre Dame, Michigan. So let's obviously let's look at that game uh, from both sides, from the quarterback that Jim Harbaugh got to the quarterback that Brian Kelly just named, and how you see this game. I, you know, you think about what's at stake there. You know, I know it's only week one, but. You know, both these coaches really could use a win uh, to start their their campaign in 2018. I can't wait to watch Shea Patterson. You know, I, I was hoping that Tariq Black would come back from his injury uh, because I think he's his best receiver. Uh, and he only, only – here comes another injury uh, for Black. So he's out again. So it's going to – I think that will affect their perimeter passing game and the vertical passing game. Um, but, but I do think Shea Patterson – remember, he's a – Coming out of high school, he was a dual guy. He was a perfect fit for Hugh Freeze and that Ole Miss offense. And now he's going to go into more of a pro-style Jim Harbaugh offense. There is, there is an adjustment as far as the scheme is concerned. But the two things that I think I'm looking for, not just Saturday night from Shane, but throughout the year, two areas that have really hurt Michigan. That's, number one, simple, protect the football. They've turned the ball over like crazy at that position. If you can just protect the ball and punt and rely on that Don Brown defense, that alone will help them win some close games. So that's one thing, not turning the ball over. Second thing, and something we've not seen since Harbaugh's been there, third down efficiency. You're going to see this quarterback who's mobile on third and six, things are covered down. He's going to take off and pick up eight and 12 yards on a scramble and keep the, the, the chains moving and sustain drives, which to me will account for a lot of hidden yards and a lot of time of possession, and with that defense, if he's if he protects the ball and he's efficient on third down, those two things alone, Michigan is going to be tough to beat for anybody starting Saturday night against Notre Dame. I, I, you know, I'm a huge Brandon Wim, Wimbush guy as a person. I don't know if you're going to meet a better guy than Brandon Wimbush. And if you watch him throw in shorts and a T-shirt, he throws the ball as, as good as anybody. But 49% last year in his first year as a starter, not good enough. So I'm anxious to see how much he's improved with his decision making and his accuracy. Because Mike, you know from following them last year, it was drop back, primaries covered, take off and run. And and this year, I'm hoping to see him work to that second or third option 
and uh, get that completion percentage up. So we'll, we'll see. It's a, what a great game to start the season for both those teams. Absolutely, as our college football analyst Kirk Herbstreet is with, with us, and Allstate knows that football season is mayhem, and that's why they're reminding fans that if mayhem can show up on game day, imagine what can happen the rest of the week. So better get protected with Allstate. Uh, you mentioned quarterbacks and Brandon Wimbush. Let's talk about Alabama. Tua Tonga Vailoa, uh, Herbie, has, is one of the co-favorites to win the Heisman Trophy. And we still don't know if he's going to be the starter, uh, week one Saturday when they take, when they take on Louisville. How do you see this? Forget week one. How do you see this playing out and eventually someone settling in as the starter? Well, I think this is, this is kind of a microcosm of, of where all coaches are when they're dealing with a, a, a quarterback quandary with two very talented guys and, they're not only concerned about picking the right guy, they're concerned with how they do it. Because if they do it the wrong way, the other guy's gone. That's the world we live in now. It's, it's become an epidemic around the last five to seven years. The backup quarterback uh, ends up getting frustrated, leaves, transfers to go somewhere else. And that's why I think Nick Saban's handling this the way he is. Eventually, he's going to have to go with somebody. Keep in mind, Jalen Hurts in his first and second year, he's been to two national championship games. He's 26-2. and two. So we're not talking about a guy that's necessarily struggling mightily. Uh, we're talking about Alabama being as good as they can be. It's my feeling, and I know we only have a half, but I've been to a lot of Alabama practices and watched two as well. It's my belief that this is Nick Saban's most talented, deepest offense that he's had around the quarterback position since he's been in Tuscaloosa. You look at their receivers, the depth at tight end, the four deep at tailback, the big physical offensive line. They no longer can beat you just by playing defense and special teams and running the ball and play action, throwing it vertically. They can distribute and throw the ball all over the place. And because of that, it makes more sense to me to go with Tua. Um, since that's conventional wisdom, it wouldn't shock me to see Jalen Hurts run out there. That's just kind of how Nick Saban is, just to kind of throw you a curveball. But uh, I think Tua's ability to, to throw the ball around the field and use all those weapons would put Alabama in a better place to, to, to max out their potential. And I'm talking about 45, 50 points a game kind of potential if Tua's in the game. They, they are going to be very, very tough to stop because of the depth and, and the talent around the quarterback spot. Kirk Herbstreet joining us. You can check out Herbstreet and Fitzsimmons podcast with new episodes weekly. Listen on the ESPN app or Apple podcast. And Herbie, we know the teams at the top. We always talk about Bama, Clemson, Georgia, Wisconsin, Ohio State, Washington, and a few others. How about those more in the bottom of the top 25 or maybe just on the outside looking in that you think could surprise a few people this year? Well, I think the, the group of five, it's always a fun debate. You know, who's going to emerge as, as a team uh, that's going to start to kind of climb the rankings? UCF was that team last year, and there's some people that feel that they could be at that team again this year. I think it's Boise State. Uh, I think that, uh, that this is a team that has enough experience coming back from last year. Uh, if they go to Oklahoma State and win early in the year, I think that could really propel them to, to having a a potential magical year as a group of five team getting up there. I think Florida State seems to be a little bit of a forgotten team. Willie Taggart in his first year, they're all the way down at 19 uh, in the AP poll. I think they have a shot. You know, they open up the season Monday night, by the way, against Virginia Tech at home. It'll be fun to see them. DeAndre Francois is back after missing almost the entire year last year. He's back now at quarterback. Uh, just a team that, that worth throwing out there. Um, you know, I, I think – Florida with Dan Mullen. I'm trying to think of these new coaches who could hit the ground running, who, who are not ranked very high. I think Florida has a chance with with Dan Mullen. And if you're looking for a team that could could break things up and, and really become a factor, I think it's Mississippi State again with a new coach, uh, Joe Moorhead. I know it seems like there's so much expectations that there's maybe even pressure on Mississippi State, but uh, I think Mississippi State they got a great coach who happens to inherit a. a some personalities and characteristics that fit what he likes to do offensively. So I think Mississippi State is definitely a wild card coming out of the SEC West. Kirk Herbstreet with us, our college football analyst, as we get set for the first deep dive of the season coming up this weekend. Uh, listen, we talked a little bit about Tua being a co-favorite for the Heisman Trophy winner. Who do you think is the favorite right now heading into the season? Well, my, my playoff teams are Alabama, Clemson, Washington, and Penn State. And I think Penn State, um, just from knowing some of those players and knowing James Franklin, I think there's there's kind of a 
a collective chip on the shoulder of that entire program. I think that they feel that, you know, they've kind of come out of nowhere since everything that they went went uh, through with the, with Jerry Sandusky and Bill O'Brien came in and James Franklin's gotten them up these last few years. I think a lot of people feel, well, Saquon Barkley had a lot to do with that success. And I think these players are anxious to show that there's more to Penn State than Saquon Barkley. And so I think Trace McSorley is going to have a great year. I think Penn State's going to have a great year. So I think Trace could become the Baker Mayfield of 2018 in college football. Not that he's going to go on and, and head into the draft. I'm talking strictly just what he'll mean to the college football season. I think he's going to have a, a big year. I think Miles Sanders, the, the running back that's going to replace Saquon, is going to have a huge year. So uh, I'm going to say you know, Bryce Love's an easy answer. Jonathan Taylor, if you're looking for running backs at Wisconsin. But uh, I'm going to go with Trace McSorley. Uh, at Penn State is, is my guy here before the season starts. Wow, I did I was not expecting that. And Herbie, most importantly, before we let you go, it's pretty clear you have some pull with the college game day operations. So what do we have to do to get Golick as one of the celebrity pickers one of these Woo! Saturdays? Because literally, it's all he lives for. That. It's all he lives for. Are you going to be in South Bend this weekend? Oh, yeah, I'll be there Thursday, actually. I'll be there all weekend. Oh my gosh! Well, let me let's let's make it happen. We got to get you on the set to have you do the dance with uh, with Corso. Oh, I'm ready to do that. I'm ready to dance. Be careful; he may show up <laughs> naked. Yeah, well, so be I mean, prepared. Yeah, if you do it on Thursday, Corso, I do. Cor- Corso told me last week um, he's already got his his skit uh, planned out, and you're uh, you're going to be intrigued by it. So if, let's talk this uh, this weekend for sure. We got to. We got to somehow incorporate you uh, into the weekend festivities in South Bend. It's going to be, by the way, for game day. Let me just say how excited we are as a show. We love those kind of those 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 games that are at these pro stadiums, neutral site games, because there's big time uh, games over the years. But there's nothing better than to hit the ground running for us being on a college campus. What better place than to be in South Bend with a rivalry game against Michigan? So we're expecting a crazy scene around the set to start off the season uh, in 2018. And, go look, we got to have you around uh, uh, dancing and having a good time. Will it be a problem if I'm drunk? No, no, okay. no, no. That's fine. Okay, cool. Fine. I just, you know, just trying to no. set the parameters. It's, it's a, yeah, no, it's, yeah. no. Everybody, come everybody come needs to know what to expect, I think, is what we're saying <laughs> yeah. here very much. Yeah. All right, Herbie, Thanks, we appreciate you good. being with us, man. All right, see you, man. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. Golick makes me want to vomit and then punch you square in the face. And Wingo. Oh, he's saucy today. We are delighted to be joined now on the Shell Penzoil Performance Line by Saints head coach Sean Payton. And Sean, I just want you to know, over this summer we have talked more about the Saints and their training camp for one reason and one reason only, because Mike Golick remembers fondly those days at the Greenbrier where he was fishing while you guys were working out Yeah, there. I'd go fish on the 16th <laughs> Fairway Lake and was catching bass while you guys were sweating in the heat when you were there. <laughs> good morning. It's, uh, it's a pretty good setup up there. You had me nervous this morning, though. My little bell rang on your show, and I'm here in Zlata and Galaxy, and I thought, man, am I calling at the right time? Oh, yeah. you are. <laughs> Listen, it's hard to follow Zlata, yeah, John, but for... we think you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I felt like I bought season tickets to something I had nothing to do with. <laughs> well, listen, if Zlatan sends the email, just know yeah. you're renewing. There you and, go. And then it's, <laughs> we, we can simply we can simply move on from there. And, and listen, I have to say, we we talked about this when you joined us at the Super Bowl. But I thought the way you handled the post game press conference after the loss in Minnesota, especially dealing with the young player Marcus Williams, was absolutely brilliant because you don't want to lose a guy that early who has so much potential and yes he 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 made the wrong play at the wrong time but i thought the way you talked about him immediately after that game to the press was one of the greatest coaching jobs through the media i've ever seen well he's i say this now he's a he is a special not only a special guy a special player uh and you know we're our league is going to hear about him for for quite some time he's had a great training camp and uh there were so many things that, you know, you're playing a game like that and you look back on and, and you remember the last play. Well, it was third and one about 28 seconds earlier, and all we need to do is get that yard, and that, that field goal is being kicked with three seconds, two seconds, you know, a second left in the game right. instead of 20-some seconds. So, there, there, you know, there were too many plays. He was involved in it. He had an interception in that game. I mean, he's had an amazing camp now. This, this is a, this guy's an elite 
elite level player. And I would say, uh, just as importantly, uh, an elite guy, strong. And uh, I, I know he's had a great off season, but there were there were too many things that took place throughout the course of that game. And it's it's tough when you lose and the finality's over with, and and you feel like ah, uh, you know, but. You know, we'll learn from that and as a team, you know, as a coaching staff and hopefully can put ourselves in a similar position this year. It's the one good thing that the peer, his peers understand that it doesn't come down to that one play. Just like you said, there are other plays and the other players and coaches obviously know that as well. And the kid does Absolutely. look Absolutely. I mean, and that's not just rhetoric. That's, yep. that's, that's really the truth of it all. I mean, we didn't play well in that first, you know, we, we fell down early and then we felt like somewhere in that second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, you know, we we had played better, and uh, and there were a, a ton of different moments that you look at. But you know, with 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 Marcus, he's there early. He's worried about the interference call and, and trying to to avoid giving them a first down right there at that uh, at that point in the field. And and then obviously there's a collision with the other corner, and um, you know, it was just a crazy finish. Certainly an exciting finish if you were a Vikings fan and, and or a football fan. But um, but listen, we'll get back and, and get up and, uh, you know, we get started here in a week and a half. You know, and, and Coach, as as you're getting ready to get started, it's a new year, so the, the slate is wiped clean. But, you know, you look at your quarterback in Drew Brees. You look at, like, an Eli Manning, a Ben Roethlisberger, uh, a Phillip Rivers, guys who are going to be Hall of Famers but also are coming to the end of their careers. Do you, so is there a different emphasis knowing that you have a quarterback while an all-time great quarterback and like these other teams as well, that your the window of opportunity with this quarterback is, is starting to be limited? Well, I don't, I don't think, I don't think for the players there is, in other words, the players would say, well, shoot, we want to win. We want to play well. And, and I think then as an organization, you may be a little bit more willing to to look at a, a specific targeted free agent player. I mean, look, the, the, there is a window while Drew's here. Hopefully, you know, we're building a, and we have built a program that, that's sustainable uh, for not only the near future, but the far future as well. And, and so I think that, look, there were a few pieces we added in the offseason, some veteran players that came in, Demario Davis, Kurt Coleman, um, you know, we drafted, uh, I think pretty well again, and we're going to have a chance to see Davenport and we're going to have a chance to see this Trey Quan Smith, the receiver out of central Florida and, and, and a number of guys. Um, but I, I do think in our league, what, what happened a year ago, there there's, it's not like the, the, the graduation that you see sometimes in the NBA. Well, now the next step that, our league, you know, the slate is truly wiped clean, and, and you start again. And if we look last year at a few of our wins, they very easily could have went either way. And uh, I'm sure we had some losses the same way. But, um, you know, you really got to start from square one. And, and hopefully as, as we get ready to approach the start of this season, you know, we'll be, we'll be ready to play uh, good football. Sean Payton with us, the Saints head coach. And, and you mentioned uh, this year's draft class. I just want to say – they have a lot to live up to. Because if you look back at what you guys did in the draft last year, Ryan Ramchick, uh, Marcus Lattimore, some guy named Alvin Kamara, that I don't know, we've heard of a little bit, and also Marcus Williams, uh, that, those four picks alone, getting those four players out of one draft and what they were able to contribute, absolutely remarkable. And then this year, you, you move up, you basically give up a first round pick to get that edge rusher, edge rusher, uh, Marcus Davenport. Uh, that's a big move, Sean, that a lot of teams usually reserve for someone like a quarterback. What made you so sure in, yeah, in getting that I stock from Marcus? If you look at the math and it, it's, it's not as big a move as you, as you think. If you're drafting at the back of the first round, and you feel as if you're going to draft at the back of first round, then you're really taking late ones and trying to get an earlier one. And if you, so, I, I I think it's much different if if look you're you're giving up, you know. So I think you got to look at the picks, and, and when you do the valuation, the numbers, it, it, it makes sense. Um, now, the the pick the 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 trade makes sense. Whether or not you agree with the pick, then is a different thing. So. But but moving up into that first round, it's just hard to get one of these edge rushers picking where where we were picking, and and we weren't looking just specifically to find we we, we felt this guy Davenport was a guy that 
could fit with what we're doing. We saw his strength, his length. Um, we saw a lot of the things that that we felt would help us as a team. And, and you know, he'll play at right defensive end. Okafer will be over there as well. Uh, and so uh, I, it was just a matter of if, if he was going to be still available when the trade was made or else we wouldn't have made the trade. Uh, we're talking to Sean Payton, head coach of the New Orleans Saints. Uh, we know the running back, uh, Mark Ingram, gone the first four games, suspended. So Alvin Kamara, those two obviously played so well off one another. Is the plan to, to still split time with other backs or let him carry more of the load early in the season? Mike, that's, that's a good question. Uh, you know, I think for us as a team, uh, we've got to be smart about increasing a workload. You know, I, I think – uh, his touch percentage and how he played in the base and the nickel, what we did with him in the passing game, um, it fit. And, and so I, I think we're still, believe it or not, sitting here with you know a week left of this preseason. We're still evaluating and still looking. And we've got a few guys here competing for those touches uh, that, that we're going to lose when Mark's gone. And, you know, I say it all the time to these players, you know, you're not just – you start looking at your depth chart in your room and you're failing to look at the other 31 teams because this player can come from within, but this player could be, you know, running back number four from one of these other teams that, that gets released or traded. So uh, we're still, we're still pursuing that. We're still evaluating it. Boston Scott is a young player. We drafted Jonathan Williams, uh, another young player out of Arkansas. Uh, and then Shane Vereen, someone uh, that we signed in the off season. So those three guys are kind of competing for that role. Um, and yet it, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to come from those three players. Hopefully it does. As we're talking to Sean Payton, Saints head coach, we, everyone falls in love with offense, Sean, and you're one of the brilliant play callers of the offensive side. But the reason the, the Saints were back in the playoff chase and came so close to getting to the NFC Championship game a year ago was a dramatic turn on your defense from the from the unit that was 7-9 three straight years, really an impact group from start to finish. What changes do you want to see, and how do you keep improving that side of the ball to make sure you guys are in the playoff hunt again? Well, I, I think twofold. I, I think it's important. Uh, for us as a team offensively to, to still maintain that balance in, in the time of possession. Those are some of the things that can help the other side of the ball defensively. Um, this past weekend in, in, in LA versus the chargers, we had four drives of over an average of 12 plays. And all of a sudden the time of possession kicks in your favor. Uh, the numbers kick in your favor defensively. You're not dependent as many snaps. Uh, so I, I think, the balance uh, starting with what we do offensively. And then I think defensively, we were much better in third down last year. Uh, we were much better uh, taking the ball away and in uh, and, and hurrying the quarterback. Um, I know specifically we want to be a, a little bit better in the red zone. And and the focus, again, and the takeaways, you've seen it in the preseason. Some of these teams have jumped out. I mean, Arizona, I don't. they might be close to 20 takeaways right now in the preseason. And I know it's just the preseason – and yet something's happening there for that, to, for that to take place. Sean Payton, head coach of the Saints, joining us on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. And then there's – and I have a kind of a soft place in my heart for what's going to happen on Saturday because yeah. I worried about it a, a number of times being a 10th rounder. You actually released my son twice, once in the summer when he was there and once on last cuts, which is coming up Saturday. So certainly some, yeah. some personal experience there. Talk about that side of it. There's over a thousand guys that'll be without a job. Some will catch on in practice squad, some on other teams, but some their dream will be over. How, how difficult is that? And what, what do you see at times when you're telling these guys that they won't be part of the team? I think it's the, it's the toughest part of our job. And, um, you know, I was never, I, I was cut three different times. And, and, and really I was kind of like the airplane that never took off really it, 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 at the next level and kept trying, kept trying. And, and I think that, you know, the first thing when a player walks in is you, you, you always want to keep that dream alive for them. And you, you know, uh, for so many of these guys, they're going to have another opportunity, whether it's in another camp, um, maybe the next off season, uh, sometimes they'll ask questions, you know, a lot of times they'll ask about where their weaknesses are. Sometimes uh, it's quiet. Sometimes each each player is, is a little different, and it's an emotional time for them. Um, I think there's a buildup because so much is made of this week, and you know the the questions they're getting asked throughout the week, and and 
you know, they know there's another game. This is the last preseason game. And, and then, you know, it's like the drums start rolling and here comes Friday and here comes Saturday. And uh, that's difficult. Um, I think it's a little different when you're in the flow of things and all of a sudden, you know, mid stride, you're asked to come up and, and you're released. It's a much different either, you know, but this, when, when you're here during the off season program and the running and the lifting, uh, you know, all the work that's get, that gets put into what they do in the summer, uh, keeping their bodies in great shape and then coming to training camp and putting the pads on. And man, that's difficult, you know, to hike really to the very top of the mountain and then, and then not get to cross, you know, cross over the gate. I think that's very challenging. And, uh, um, it's, it's one of the harder weekends of the year. It certainly is, and and again, it's so fluid because people think they've made the team, and then somebody else gets released somewhere else, and another team picks them up. It's 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 a great and awful Tough. weekend yeah. at the same Definitely time. Definitely is. Sean Payton, by the way, one of the uh, one of the member of the greatest lineages of all time, Eastern Illinois quarterbacks that have significant yes. issues in yeah. the NFL. Tony Romo, Jimmy Garoppolo, I believe Brad Childress and Mike Shanahan. Also Absolutely, there, so, there you yep. go. Uh, yep. that, that that's quite that's quite the uh-huh. group from an unexpected source that has had quite an impact on a lot of levels in the NFL. Hey, Sean, we appreciate you being with us this morning. Best of luck with the season. I'm sure we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Sean. Sounds good, guys. Thank you. And again, if Zlatan sends that email, renew. Just make sure you renew. (laughs) Most important thing we can tell you. This has been the best of Golik and Wingo podcast. You can listen or subscribe on the ESPN app, Apple Podcasts, or just ask your smart speaker to play Golik and Wingo. Plus, you can check the guys out live weekday mornings from 6 to 10 Eastern on ESPN Radio and on ESPN News. Remember when you couldn't order a ride at the press of a button? Or get online without hearing this? Or get Domino's delivered to over 150,000 unexpected outdoor locations. Wait, what? Introducing Domino's Hotspots. You can finally get pizza delivered right to the beach, the quad, or the dog park. Not at home? Not a problem. Find a Domino's Hotspot near you and get two medium, two-topping pizzas delivered for $5.99 each. Two at a minimum handmade pan pizzas will be extra asked for this limited time offer. Prices for participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Restrictions apply. Visit Domino's.com for details on Domino's Hotspots.